Coming up this week on Archer's Choice. This week on The Archer's oh, Choice, we're going elk hunting in Sierra Vista Ranch. My elk hunt. You're trying to open a show without me, aren't you? Uh, ain't gonna happen, mm-mm. Why not? Because this week, it's all about the vixen, that's true. That's right. But we were, we finally got the monkey off her back. It actually turned into a gorilla because it was like my sixth elk hunt and I finally got it off my back. I finally so got it. So many elk. close encounters through all these years. Yes. They're right there or the brush is too thick. You can't shoot. I mean, but something would always screw it up. But this time, I mean, we've got plenty of encounters to show. It's awesome. Hail Gom up there at Sierra Vista, all the guys up there. Unbelievable place We had a in Colorado. great hunt. We really did. This week's lucky logo is Plano. Before Plano we forget. keeps all your gear protected no matter what. How are you going to come up with something for every single one of those? I'm very clever and crafty and fast. There's another word too, but I think that's not nice for TV, so we'll just keep going. I'm gonna keep shooting my bow. Are you gonna shoot? Yeah, but I was gonna help you retrieve your arrows. Okay, you retrieve my arrows. With the bad boy? Absolutely, shoot, go on. There's a little history on my elk hunting career. Um, I've been on five elk hunts up to this point. And I came home with zero elk. First elk hunt I went on, we went up there and uh, we had, it was a 12 day hunt and we had 10 days of rain and we were at about 10,000 feet where the thunder and the lightning were hitting. And we actually had to put a moat around our tent, it rained so much. And pretty much every elk hunt after that, I've had one thing or another, it just, that's the way it went. Our in our market. Well, we finally made it to San Luis. Um, we are here. We have to run into the R and R store right there that said um, license hunting and fishing. So we have to get myself an elk tag, Colorado bow hunting elk tag. Yeah, baby. Hopefully this is the year. Well, we're checking everything. We're checking mics, we're checking camera gear, we're checking all of our hunting gear, make sure everything's ready to go. Just put my Hellraisers on my beam and arrows. I've got my Hoyt sitting outside. I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna get dressed real quick, go take a couple quick shots, and we're out of here. I mean, this is fast. Just bought my tag this afternoon, just pulled into camp, and we're going elk hunting now. We hunted with Hal Gom. He was my guide, and, and we've known Hal for a bunch of years, and he's just a really good guy, and he's a lot of fun to be with. And Hal said, this is not gonna be a problem for you, Vic. We're gonna, we're gonna make it, it's gonna be easy for you. We're gonna get you on a bull, it's gonna be close, and you're gonna go home with an elk this time. We're gonna get that monkey off of your back. Or two. That one time he let out one. It sounded like he was just right here at the end of that meadow, like. But right, I was thinking too. We were like, he's coming, he's coming. When he yeah. got set up, we thought he's coming. Well, he he screamed one more, he bugled one more time, real loud after we got set up and everything. Mm -hmm. But then the wind swirled. Yeah, I kept and we checking couldn't, it. Yeah. Was, and that's the hardest part about hunting this is that we're in a bowl, and that's what happened. Yep. You know. When when it comes to elk hunting. Like anything, any time you're calling anything, is you have ups and downs. That's right. And some middle, middle, middle roads. Yep. They're coming in, they're going out, they're they're they're, they're right there. That you can't get a shot. Or but the reality of it is, is it's elk hunting, and we want to show it and keep it real because that's that's what we're all about. All right, let's keep hunting. I'll keep walking the ridge line with a buggy. Okay. Just look at and listen. 
it's nice now that we can we can hear everything, you know? Yeah. We got no Wait, well, you thought you heard a bugle? I thought I heard a bugle, but I don't know. While we're on the buggy. We're sitting there and there's this bull and he's bugling and bugling and we get set up and Hal is set, set up about, I don't know, maybe 30 yards behind Ralph and I and he's back there and he's calling and this bull's calling back and he comes walking down this old cut road and I see the bull and, it, and it's a raghorn. He's not a big bull, but at the, I don't care. I'm trying to shoot me my first elk. You know, and he, can't, he starts coming and then all of a sudden he was like, yeah, something's not right and the bull goes away and Hal comes up and he tells me. I am so glad you didn't draw back because I was going to, I do not, we can do better than that, Vicky. Don't shoot the first bull that you see, you know, wait until I say yes. I thought, oh no, this is crazy. This is, I'd have been so happy with that raghorn. I mean, come on, it would have been an elk, would have gotten the monkey off my back and he's going to eat just as good as any other elk out there. We had gotten up and we had heard, and it sounded like a really good bull bugling. You can actually tell the difference between the size and the age of the bulls just by their bugling. Sometimes you know they'll let out a little scream, sometimes they'll let out a huge, just gnarly growl. And we're trying to get in position to where we can go ahead and, you know, get into where the bull is at and where the cows are at. And you always gotta keep your eyes open for where those cows are at so that you're not in their way and they don't see you and you don't get between them. And, well, we got in, we tried getting set up while well, the cows decided they wanted to go up high and the bull stayed right behind them. The closest I got to that bull was 65 yards, but he was a really good bull. It's going up. At that time, mid-September, those bulls have one thing on their mind and it's the cows and they're going to go wherever the girls lead them to. And those girls took them straight up that mountain. And, and I still had all the little trees in front of my face, so I, I mean, I couldn't have shot him. I saw where he was. I was like, because I was trying to yeah. you know, keep you guys yeah. pivot point. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, no, it's not. That was a we get your heart going first thing in the morning. It was the deal this morning. Oh, got my blood pumping. Don't go anywhere because we come back, there's more bugling coming your way. things I used to I remember when everyone I had the, all you know all the, all the guys come out to hunt mm -hmm. is they all had a sound they thought they had a sound like the biggest baddest bull yeah and all that's gonna do is gonna deter absolutely the, you know the ones that maybe aren't the biggest baddest bulls. You know, let's be real when we talk about elk hunting or a lot of calling is here's here's a bull he's a big five by five nice five by five he's got eight cows do you want to sound like a big bad bull by yourself and you're gonna come here kick his butt and he's you know take all his girls right no way how cool would that be in nature oh getting it once a year no, oh. but like having eight cows. You want eight cows? Well, we can make, we can arrange that. We can, no problem. I'll get you eight cows. That really didn't go the way I planned. We saw movement down in this valley, and we got set up again on this on this old cut road, and you know tr trees and grass and everything's growing up on it. And I'm sitting there, and I thought I saw a good bull. Ralph sees a raghorn come up. But what I saw was a good bull in the background cross the road and go up, and Ralph's like, no, it's a raghorn. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to shoot anything. If they thought that one back there was a raghorn, I am done for. Well, in all, obviously, there was actually two bulls, and this one little spike raghorn kind of starts coming up at us and realizes that he doesn't want to come by us either, and he takes off running.
Next thing I know, I hear another bugle, and it's up higher, but it's closer. And as I'm looking and I'm seeing, I'm looking, I'm trying to see if I can locate him and where he's at, and I realize that he's right there. He's within 50 yards of us at this point. And all I can see, because of where I was sitting down, all I can see over the, the grasses and this deadfall is the tops of his tines walking. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this is gonna happen. Time for this week's Bow Hunting World Magazine Tip of the Week. You know, for many, one of the biggest fears is calling an elk. The thing is, is hunter specialties has made it, you could be, you remember growing up, the one-man band? Well, they've got so many easy calls. You, you, a lot of people can't use the reed calls. I myself, I love the reeds because you have so much flexibility, but you don't even need that. You can practice like... That's because I swallowed a reed years ago. The other thing is, is they make some simple calls. You come in here, it's just a squeeze and blow in there. Simple. The other thing is your cow calls. Now using a tube, what you wanna always remember is these animals have the unique ability, any wild animal has the unique ability to pinpoint where that sound's coming from. So you need to draw them past you if you're hunting alone. Easy way of doing that is grabbing your tube. If you want to just cow call, put that in there and send it in the back. What you're doing is you're channeling it down. If you want to do your bugling, keep the tube in back. Now, what you're doing is you're making that bull that's holding up, he wants to come past you to go see where that sound's coming from. Using all these little calls in unison, and you can end up actually sounding like a one-man band that has a bull and a whole bunch of cows. That is your Bow Hunting World Tip of the Week. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we're gonna see if the Vixter can use her Vixen and get her big bull out. The excitement, the adrenaline rush, the moment of truth, and then, then it like they, something goes wrong or whatever. Here it is. We hope we've built up the suspense because it's killing me. Because as you watch it, it's like, oh my gosh. I, I, it was unbelievable. It was, I relived that every day. I can, can, I can be pretty quiet and pretty calm until I release that arrow, and then I lose it. I mean, that's, I guess I'm blessed that way. I can hold it, hold it together until that shot, and then it's gone. Now, here's the deal, is when you can share it with the ones you love, and, and I know that, you know, elk hunt, the elk have been a really hard thing for Vic. I mean, she's, she's 
hiked mountains straight up, straight down. She's done everything you could think of. It just, when it always came to al that almost, it just never could happen. And it was an honor and a pleasure. And, you know, we thank Dr. Jim, Richard, Hal, everybody, just because you, you, made, you made not only my wife's dream come true, but, but mine. And, the safest way. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I have to say, this is my sixth elk hunt. I've been crying like a big baby since I shot him. It is what, September 8th, September 8th, 2009. And I just got myself a toad of a bull. Look at this bull. He is just, oh my gosh. He is just magnificent. I don't even know where to begin, Al, Ralphie, Ralphie for putting up with me for every single elk hunt we've been on that I haven't gotten one in hell for getting that big gorilla monkey off of my back. All you guys back, all you guys back at Archer's Choice Media and all you guys watching right now, I can't tell you, gosh, this is huge. RJ Mommy did it. She got her bull elk. 230? Three, three. 358 and 68. <laughs> well, I'm not kidding. 358. Awesome, almost, almost a 360 class bull. I got you by 10 <laughs> inches! <laughs> Where's that gun? 358? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, she did it. Yeah, she, she, she shot a bigger bull than all of mine, but that's all right. I can handle it. I got broad shoulders. I, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks. That was so cool. That was, you, know, you know what? That was one of those things where you don't think you, it really means that much to you, and then when I got it, it was just like, wow, what a relief. That was... You know, one of my I, favorite hunts now. And I want to drive it home because that shot placement was absolutely perfect. Quartering away. Heavy quartering away. In, you have to come up, up over that hip and go in, and you went all the way down through the boiler maker. I didn't have a shot at that 20, and there was no way I could do it. Because so. of the brush, right? Yep, the brush was too tall for me. That was unbelievable. You know, Hal, Dr. Jim, Richard, all I mean, everybody. Kelly, all of you guys, thank you so thank much. Thank you enough for, for making not only her, but, but our dream come true. Hey, if you happen to see the little Plano Lucky logo, Plano Lucky logo, Keeps not the Plano logo. There you go. No matter what. Okay. Log on to archerschoice.com. Click on the Lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win a great bow case. Yep. Yeah. 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 So next so week. Next week we're going to be hunting, we're going to be bearing down with Adrenaline yep. Outfitters up yep. in Manitoba. Yeah. Wait till you see this huge bear oh, that Zendel gets an opportunity at. Opportunity. We don't want to say 
Well, no, no, you no. could say shot. We, yeah, no. We should probably. No, we should just go. Send him. We'll in see you next week, same time, same channel, right here on the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.